and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be having a look at a puzzle by a new setter uh, called Joe Blogs, <laughs> and it's called Miss Roberts dot 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 dot, um, which it looks like an anagram to me. <laughs> I want it to be something like Barnstormers or something. But uh, anyway, th this is this is unusual. Mark has sent me this one um, and says that I have to make a deduction at the end of the puzzle. And if I can get the deduction, I'm allowed to open an email that he has sent me. But on no accounts am I allowed to open the email without making the deduction first. So that's what we're going to that's what we're going to do today. I think it's just it's a sort of arrow Sudoku with a bit of a bit of cage thrown in. Um, anyway, that is all I know. We're going to have a look at this in a moment or two's time. I have got news aplenty to t talk to you about yesterday. I mentioned it um, in. Friday's video, uh, but our book is very nearly ready. Let me um, let me show you said picture. Oh no, Windows in the wrong place. Um, our brand new book. It's very nearly about. Well, it's about to be printed, uh, and we are trying to work out how large the print runs should be. So, if by any chance um, maybe you didn't get in on the Kickstarter, or you're thinking about a nice Christmas present for somebody who likes puzzles. Um, this is definitely, I think, worth worth your attention. Um, and uh, that I'll put a link. I'll put a link under the video where you can um, you can order a copy. Um, and I wholeheartedly commend it to you. There's even the opportunity to buy an O Bobbins cushion <laughs> in, in case that's of interest. Um, yeah, but this is this is this is something we've been working on for well over a year um, so it's quite exciting for us um, definitely check it out um, now other news I've got to tell you about today is birthday related so I'm going to say a very happy birthday to Chris and that's from your wife Emily and your dog Bella and I even have a picture of Bella there we go there's Bella looking quite sleepy um, but Chris I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today I hope you get some chocolate cake um, don't share it with Bella um, uh, and yeah there are more birthdays to come so happy birthday to Noah and that's from your girlfriend Tian um, and apparently Tian and Noah often do escape rooms together which does sound fun um, and she she asked me to read you a message basically she says when she's with you there is no problem the two of you can't solve and she loves you which is I think Noah you have to agree quite a good birthday present already um, so have a have a good one and have some cake as well and then finally I've got an unusual birthday this is for a school a school called Friedrich Koenig Gymnasium or Gymnasium um, in Würzburg which apparently is celebrating its 50th birthday this year. And I know this because Ollie wrote to us. Uh, I'm not sure whether Ollie is a student there or a teacher there, um, but Ollie, Ollie in fact sent us a Sudoku themed on this 50th anniversary. I'm not sure if Mark, Mark might be having a look at that. I don't know. Oh, no, I really don't know. I don't know whether the testers gave it to him or not. <laughs> if they did, you might see it later on this evening. Um, but anyway, Ollie, thank you for sending it. Thank you for letting us know. And I don't think the school can eat cake, but maybe its students can. Um, yeah, and that's all the news. So let's turn our attention to actually solving some Sudoku. Let's have a look at Ms. Roberts um, by Joe Blogs. And the rules are as follows. So we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. So we have to put, I've got loads of given digits in this grid. We've got load, um, so we've got to put the digits one to nine, once each in every row in every column and in every three by three box. Um, the cage shows its sum. That's a very, very succinct way of putting it. And it's, uh, so these uh, six cells sum up to 39. Ooh, there's something interesting we could do that if we know a secret. Um, digits on an arrow sum to the number in the circle or the two digit number in the pill, which reads from left to right. Ah. Uh, Right. OK, so OK, so there are lots of circles in the puzzle, I can see. And what we're basically being told there is that those three digits add up to what we put in the circle. But here we've got a pill. Um, so say the numbers on the pill added up to uh, let's actually pick a number they can add up to 31. Let's say they added up to 31. Then we would be then that would be a three. That would be a one. 
and these digits would all add up to 31. And that's, that's all the rules. So do have a go. The way to play as usual is to click the link under the video. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm going to start here um, because I can see something. Uh, a little bit of arithmetic tells me the value of these two cells. Now, if you can't if you can't work them out immediately, you might not know the secret, which is something I share with my very favorite people. Uh, and of course, if you're still with me after five minutes of this video, you're definitely one of my favorite people. Um, people rarely are, last longer than about 20 or 30 seconds at parties. So how do we do it? Well, what is the secret? Well, because we know that every box of a Sudoku contains the digits one to nine months each, we actually know it's sum. So that box altogether adds up to the triangular number for nine, which is 45. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine is 45. So if the whole box adds up to 45, but these six cells add up to 39, that means these three cells have to add up to six, which means they must be the lowest possible Sudoku digits. They've got to be a one, two, three, triple, and we've already got the three. So this is a one, two pair. And therefore, okay, so therefore, yeah, I can do Sudoku. It's absolutely outrageous, Joe Blocks. <laughs> make, make me do Sudoku already. Um, because where does two go in box six now? Uh, I don't think it can go in a circle. Obviously, if this was a two, these two squares would have to be a zero. And if this was a two, I don't quite know how that would work, but it's impossible given these two digits have to be different. So I think that that has got to be a two. And in fact, now that, that lets us place one. There we go. That's, well, we're off to some sort of start here. Now, oh, I was about to say we can place six in this box, but we can't quite. There's a six in one of those two squares by Sudoku. And you can put six on the arrow, surprisingly, but only if this is a one. Um, which it might be able to be. I'm not sure. Um, in fact, what is this circle? What is it? It can't it can't be eight or seven, and yet this digit must be at least three. So this arrow altogether must add up to at least six, because if we make this one a one two pair and add three to it, we get to six already. So this has to be six or nine. Um, and if it if it is six, that is a three. And that's a one. And if it's nine, then the six has to go here. And that's still a one. <laughs> so this square here is always a one, apparently. Now, this this has a very, it's very unusual feel to it so far. Um, and there is nothing wrong with that. So two in box nine, look, has to go in one of these two squares by our fair weather friend Sudoku. I don't think this arrow is doing anything. It's probably this arrow, but let's just let's just check whether we. Yeah, well, hmm. No, hang on. I'm going to look at this arrow first. But okay, because what do I put into those two squares? I can't possibly put, given that one of the digits, well, both digits have to be at least three, so you can't put seven on the arrow because that will make this ten. So this has to be a three, five pair. That's weird. OK, so that's a three, five pair, which means this is an eight by arithmetic. Uh, oh, no, nearly eight. I could pencil mark that. I think I'll hold off on that for a moment, for a moment. But sh right, eight in this box. Let's do the easy, easy things first. Seven, this is going lo in a lovely way so far. That's now got to be a nine, uh, which doesn't resolve this. Okay. Hmm. Four looks like it's trying to be restricted. Well, it is a little bit restricted in box two, because one th one place it can't go. Look, is in the circle. If you did put four there, this would have to be a one-three pair, and the threes would clash in row two. So I think it's not brilliant, but four has to go in one of two places. No, could that be eight? That would be nine. Actually, we've only got one nine in the grid, so that's probably not what we're meant to. That's got to be at least a three. So that's got to be at least a 
four. That's no, that's not where we look next. Um, this might be the moment where we have to we have to change tack. What actually? What's that digit? Uh, oh, bobbins. <laughs> I was about to say that's going to give me a six nine pair, and in fact, it would be resolved. But that's not actually true because this could have a repeated digit on it. So if that 2 went into this square and that was a 1, that could be 5. That's rotten, actually. That is a rotten deduction because... Oh, no, all right, I'm going to change tag. <laughs> I will come back to this in a moment, but th that, of course, raises the question of where 5 goes in box 6, and I can now see it's got to be a, in a vertical it's got to be in one of those two squares. So that's fixing that. That's putting that there. So five is now in one of two places in box nine. Okay. And now, now we just ask where three goes in, in this box down here. Because it doesn't go there, so it's got to go on the arrow. And that means this square here is a six. So these two squares have become a five nine pair. And now, now we can do... Well, we're not going to get a three in the corner, though. Uh, we've got four, five, or six down here. Um, let's just get rid of five from that square. And then we're good to go. What about this column? Two, three, and nine. So let's put those in. Two, three, nine. That's not two. I haven't even looked at this pill yet. I suspect that's where we're going to have to go at any moment. And one, seven, and eight down here. So that's not seven. Okay. Now, hmm. well, if this is five, that has to be a two. Well, that has to be two. That has to be one. But if that's nine, these have to add up to seven. And I think that's, well, that's actually quite difficult as well. Okay, I am going to pencil mark this arrow. If, if that's five, that has to be two. That has to be one. That's the only way we can do it. If it's nine, these add up to seven. But this square here can't be a four or a three. So this is not seven made up of a four, three pair. And this square can't be a 2 or a 5, so it's not 7 made up of a 2, 5. So it's got to be 7 made up of a 1, 6, and that's going to be the 6. Okay, <laughs> so this square by hook or by crook is always 1, is what we've just discovered. Um, which, ah, nearly, okay, so we get a 1, 4 pair out of nowhere at all, which must do, can that be 5? No. <laughs> This is, it's really quite cute, this. Where does five now go in this box? Because it's not there. It's not here. And we might raise the question, well, can it go into this cell? But no, it can't, because that would make this a one, four arrow and break this square. So five is in one of two places. And, okay, one of three places in box one now. Um, hmm... Okay. Oh no, I thought it was going to be eight down here, but that's no. Oh, what about eight? No, that's not it either. I think we're finally going to have to bite, bite the bullet, aren't we? We are going to have to understand what's going on on this arrow. Right, this is probably where I should have started, but we actually got off to a good start somewhere else. So apologies if you've been yelling at me for making that I should have been able to do better down here. Right, how do we do this then? So this, this has got seven cells, look. Yeah, we can probably get this, the tens digit. This has got seven cells in box eight. The triangular number for seven is 28. So, and then we've got to add these two on, and these are adding up to at least four. So this is at least three. Uh, let's just put three in as the, as the minimum. Now, how high could it go? Um, well, could this be a one, two pair? Maybe. I don't, I, it probably can't be for a reason I can't immediately see. But if that was a one, two pair, then using the secret, 
these would add up to 42. And 42 plus 17, good grief. Actually, you can go really high with this and get to 59. Wow. So I can't get the tens digit. That's three, four, or five. Hmm. There's a small deduction as well I'm noticing, which is that this digit, whatever it is, is obviously it's the units digit of this sum. But look, it's forced onto the arrow in box eight. So whatever that is, it has to go in one of those squares, which means that the rest of the sum here, which is going to be 30, 40 or 50, because we can take the units digit out. So the rest of the arrow, apart from this digit, wherever that lives on this line, the rest of the arrow is going to add up to a number that is divisible exactly by 10 and is going to be 30, 40 or 50. Admittedly, there is quite a lot of difference between those two things. If we could limit, you know, if we knew this didn't have low digits or high digits in it, then that would seriously impact on this is this one's ability to be a, a whole variety of things. I'm not, ah, six can't go there. Oh, there's a five in the corner of the puzzle. There we go. All right. I was suddenly just non-plus for a moment. I was thinking, I can't do this. I don't understand what to do, but maybe it's because I've not thought about Sudoku enough. Although, hmm. <laughs> um, This is odd, actually. I, I've, I'm not seeing where I'm meant to look. I don't think I don't think this is under pressure, because I, I just feel like there's so much flexibility in the values of. The, well, there's a lot of flexibility in the value of those digits, and there's a lot of flexibility in the value of these digits. So it feels like I've under sudokued to this point. Never, never find yourself uh, knowingly under sudoku that is not not a good place to be two oh no two's in one of those that doesn't feel like it's important okay let's try that circle which i notice can't be six seven or eight so the highest it can be is nine but if it's below nine and it can't be five for the reason we said before so ah that's it oh good grief right so that's three or nine only ah okay Right, so that digit's under pressure. Because if that's three, then we have this has to be a one two pair with the one here, and this will be a two. If it's nine, that it can't be one eight, and it can't be four five. I don't believe so. That's where I should have been looking. That <laughs> just, that just didn't occur to me. Um, I'm just going to double check that. Have I got that right? It can't be. No, I think I have. It can't be five because that would be a one four pair. That's really nice, actually. OK, so we have to go three with a one two pair. And now, no, I thought I was going to get one. Um, th uh, th oh, yeah, that's a three, apparently, by Sudoku. This three, this three and this three all operating on this box. That feels like it might be important. Um, perhaps. <laughs> um, I don't know. Could we? Okay, that's a four. Let's actually let's finish doing the Sudoku we started to do. There's a four in one of those squares. Six. Oh, okay. So that's a nine, I suddenly see. I see that's a nine because there's a five, six, seven triple down at the bottom here, which is sort of caused by this six, seven and this five all operating on the box. So that becomes nine. OK, so now we're getting somewhere. We've got one, two and five uh, at the top of the grid and we can get rid of two from the corner. We're not going to get. Oh, no threes in the corner today. I suddenly notice now those squares are now four, six and seven. So these squares are three, eight and nine. 
and the three can come out of this one and the six can come out of this one. I'm learning from this puzzle. I've got to pay a lot of attention to individual individual cells. So let me try and do that. <laughs> let me actually really give this some focused attention. Um, ah, what, what do I do now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you naughty puzzle. What on earth am I meant to do now? Come on. Um, is this is this in any way obvious? It must be this column, mustn't it? Okay, let's check out column column five. We need three, six, seven, eight. So that's oh, there you go. That's a six seven apparently. So there's a six seven pair here, and now oh, I see three is here. So it is Sudoku. Oh, now that's done something. That's got rid of three from this square, three from this square, and that must be an eight now, mustn't it? Because we need to put an eight in this column. So now there's an. Uh, it's probably an eight. Can we put eight in that circle? Oh, actually, I'm going to think of. Oh, we can't put nine on an arrow ever. Yeah, we probably need to think about this circle in a minute or two, or a moment or two's time. Let's do that now. Um, can that, indeed, can that be eight? No way, because there's no way this domino of digits can add up to eight, so that immediately does something. Um, if that's eight, obviously this is nine, and that might be possible. Let's put that in. Otherwise, we're looking at four or five here. Um, I don't see how I actually resolve that either. That's three. I don't know. Um, seven, look, is up here for what that's worth. So seven is down here. It's 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 quite an unusual puzzle actually because it, there's an a lot of Sudoku that I'm having to I'm having to think about now. What can we do? What can we do with this new knowledge? Anything at all? Does it matter that I've I've locked three off this one? So whatever that digit is, well, it, it's going to be one of those two digits, isn't it? Which sort of feels like it might matter. Um, in fact, look at that digit. Where does that digit go in box eight? And the answer, because of this two six pair in the bottom row, is there. That is a two or a six. So these two are the same. Ah, but that can be a six. You rotten, you rotten puzzle. Naughty puzzle. Naughty puzzle. Wow. Okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So how do we do this then? Is it, it must be, so maybe it is this two six here. One of those digits is going to be there. I see, so there's a sort of virtual two six pair in this column because this, whichever one of these is not there is gonna be here and pair up with this. So maybe we check that digit. What's that got the option to be? So that now can't be one, two, three, four, now, can it, it needs to be something, so we shouldn't be too worried that it has to be, it could be five. It's not six, we just said that. It looks like it might be able to be seven. It can't be eight, can it be nine? Hmm, maybe. I can't see why it can't be nine, actually, which is annoying. Uh, Yeah, sorry. Okay, so that does seem to work. I doubt that that's going to be particularly 
hugely powerful then. Five. Hmm, okay. Don't know. <laughs> Don't know. How do we do this? Um... So whatever that digit is, is going to go in one of these two squares. So if that was five, that would fix this digit. That would fix lots of things. We get six there, two there, if that's five. That would then be nine, that would be six. Hang on, that didn't work. That would end, oh, that's okay. Is that right, what I've just said there? That might not have been right. I thought, that was going to cause me to have to put a six into one of those squares, which is very odd. Let me just think about that. So if that's five, the five in this box then is definitely in one of those squares, which makes this a six. So let's remember that's forcing this square to be a six. But if that's five, that's nine and that square's a six. <laughs> so those two sixes can't put a six there, so that's, that's not gonna work. Um, that's a very odd deduction, but I'm very happy with it. It's, it's, it's logical and quite actually quite cute and unusual. So that gets me another couple of digits. So this must be this row now, must it? Six, seven, and nine. So that is a six or a nine only. Six, seven, and nine come over here. So seven is no, it's, it's oh nine. Okay, so nine in this box is now vertical. It's in one of these two cells, which means nine in this box is in one of those three squares. That's not enough, is it? Wow, okay. Oh, I see. But remember we said this digit had to appear there in this box. So that's now a two. Okay, that might do something. So this isn't a two. And what's the deduction I have to make? Oh, that's going to be the coloured squares, isn't it? Oh, good grief. Okay. Whoa, okay, I've suddenly seen a reason I really have to get through this puzzle. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Okay, come on, uh, hang on a second. That's flustered me somewhat. Um, okay. Uh, okay, well, right, so now somehow, because I know one of these is a six, it's knocked six out of this one, which seems to have given me a triple here. So these are a one, six, nine triple now uh, let's actually just put that in one six nine i don't know we can get rid of six from that one and that square is now eight apparently which means that square is not eight which means that what does that mean <laughs> So this square is one, three, seven, or nine. But there's just nothing. I mean, if you look at the left-hand side of this grid, there's really nothing here. Which is a little bit worrying, to say the least. Um, hmm. I suspect, I suspect all along, I meant to understand something really cunning about this pill. But what that is, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. So let me just, let me just think about this for a second. Four, six, four, five, six, seven. So this square is four, five or six by Sudoku. I mean, I'm going to write it in, but I don't think it's doing anything. That square is four, five, six, or seven. Ah, but we know the seven is down there, so then... So that becomes four, five, or six. So perhaps there's something going on with fours, fives, and sixes in this column. Not sure, though. 
if we I don't relish trying to work out how on earth I suppose actually I say that but we do actually know quite a bit about this line now don't we I've got 26 on it at the moment and I've got to get up to a 40 something number I know but I've still got the opportunity to put 16 on it there which would be lots really would be lots so how do we oh there's a th hang on there's a three nine pair here is that true I doubt no that is true that gets me a two. Oh, but the problem is <laughs> I think that twos it's almost otios in terms of our ability to solve the puzzle from there because it doesn't do anything it, it's just it's just an isolated find um, okay Wow. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay, come on. You've got to use your brain here, Simon. You've got to use your brain. Um, this, this is pressure. This is pressure. For reasons I believe I've already sort of twigged, this is pressure. Okay, how do we solve this puzzle? Is there some way that I know this digit? Or do I literally have to have to add up? Or maybe I can... Can I somehow limit these digits a bit more? I don't know that I can. If there was no 9 in this sequence... That would be a three. That would be a one. So it would go three, seven, one. That's eleven. Three, seven, one. And that would be a six. So that would be seventeen. So seventeen plus what was I can't even remember what it was. Twenty six was it? Forty three. That would be a no, that doesn't work. So we know so we know one of these is a nine. Uh, we, no, I was going to say that means that can't be a nine, but that's not true because there are, that's not a very sensible thing I just did. All I've worked out is that one of those three digits has to be a nine. But I suppose what I also learned about that is that there weren't... There are clearly some options here which are going to be problematic, aren't there? So I wonder, is there a way that I can, I can force problematic things to happen? Five, seven here. Is there some way of looking at this row and knowing something about this square? I mean, I think this has got so many, I will pencil mark it just because it's clearly so important, but I think it's got lots of options. One, four. Can it be five? I think it can. It can't be six or seven, that is true. Eight or nine are also possible. And remember, whatever we put into this cell has to appear on the arrow in box eight. So if that was a one, one of these would be a one, that would be an eight. Hmm. Yeah, I think we might have to bite the bullet and see if we can deduce some things about these, these cells. That feels like the most likely, the most likely source of stuff, doesn't it? But even, I mean, is there a way I could even... So if that was 9, we know that would have to be 9. And that would be... Yeah, maybe we. Maybe let's think about that. Maybe I can force one of these to be 9. So the thing is, there could be two 9s as well, I suppose. There's nothing, there's nothing saying that. So maybe that digit is the place to start, rather than trying to disambiguate all of these. So if this is 9... 
Then we know this is 1, this is 7. We know we have to put a 9 on this arrow, so it would be 1, 7, 9, which is 17, and this would be a 6. So that's 23, and 23, and what do we say this was? 26, was it? That's 49, 4, 9. Ah, but that's that 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 didn't I say that was a nine in order to do that? So that doesn't work. Okay, so that's something. So there is now definitely a nine. Right. Oh no! It's, oh, bingo. Okay, that is actually interesting. That is interesting for more reasons than I can than I first appreciated because nine now is locked into these squares in box nine and into these squares in box. Uh, eight. Now that means nine has to be in one of these squares in box seven. Now actually this one can't be nine. So the nine is in one of those two squares, but look, nine can't go there. So nine in box one is in one of these two squares. Now that means that nine in this box has to be in one of these three squares because we haven't put a nine yet into this column. It can't go in there. It can't go in there. It can't go there. So it's in one of these two. And that knocks it out of this square. And that's important because if this can only be four or five now, that can't be eight. So that's a three and we've won. A, that is a hard one digit. Now, is it going to do anything? Is that horrible? Well, it, yes, yes, <laughs> it is. This is very cool. So now I've got a one, seven, nine triple here, which means I get a three there and a nine here. And now we know that's a nine. Whoa. Please, please, please keep going so that I can. Well, now I now if I feel a bit more comfortable about analyzing to death these digits, because there's a, there's relatively few options now for the big pill total. So, yeah, should we do that? Is that the sensible place to look? Might be. It might be. Okay, so where, where is our arrow up to now in this box? So, so it was at 26. It's now at 35. And 38 is where we are. So we're at 38. Let's let's try and hammer that home in, into our brains. Oh, goodness me, that could be double one. I just had a horrible thought. 38 foot. No, it can't be double one because that would make the total 40. And I can't put zero in this suit, Sudoku. Right. So this is either... It's either 6-1 or 7-1. Is Oh, no, it could be 6-7. Oh, bother. All right, let's try that. 6-7 is um, 13. And what do we say we were at? 30, 38. 51. 51 here. Does that work? No. No, it doesn't. Because if this was 51, haven't I put a 1 there? If I, if I make this 6-7, if I make that 6 and that 7, I've put 1 there. That feels right to me. I'm just double checking that in my head. So if I make this six and that seven, that's one. I've got 13 plus 38. That's 51. That has to be a one and we get a one clash, right? That doesn't work. So one of these is a one. And that means that square is not a one because that would prevent both of these from being a one. Moreover, we now know we're either looking at a one six pair or a one seven pair into these two squares. So one and six add up to seven, <laughs> uh, which would give us 45 here. Oh, no, I thought I was going to break that one. 45 here. It would be very funny if this turns out to be the secret. Um, hmm. I can't see why that's wrong. Okay, let's try the other one. So if we get if we go one seven, then we get forty. Oh, we can't do forty six here. Hang on, I've, I've done the maths right there. So if that's one and that's seven, that has to be a six, which it can't be. So it is forty five. I think we've proved it. I don't see how how that can be wrong. Because that's, that's all the options we've considered on this line. Is it possible I've missed something there? I, I just can't get this puzzle wrong. I don't think so. 
So, okay, so we worked out this can't be seven is in effect what we worked out. So that's one, that's six, that's one, that's eight, that's seven. Um, this total, I'm going to double check it now. Um, so we've got 41 plus four, that's 45. So that is right. That's four, that's five. So that's four, that's six. Not put nine into this row. That can't be nine. I could have got rid of that before. I didn't spot it. So that's now eight. That's nine. Okay, that's seven by Sudoku. And there's a six nine pair here. So that's seven by Sudoku. So that's seven by Sudoku. And that four is doing some work up here. So we have four and six, and nine here, and six here, and seven here, and six here, and five here, and seven here, and five here. Okay, great. So now that square seems to have to be four, and I've not put nine into this box. Okay, good, good. Now, now, can we see a quick way? Well, this is a four, five, eight triple. So that square has got to be a six now. Uh, that four does this square is five. Okay, and then we can get the two and the one, can't we? So that's not two, that's not one. That seems to have to be the two in the top row. Oh, I know what's gonna happen here. I know what's gonna happen. Um, one, three, that's eight. That's three, that's one, that's one, that's five, that's eight. And if I haven't made a ricket, that is a four. Right, that might be correct. But can you see what's going to happen? Well, I think I can see what's going to happen. Let's see if the puzzle's correct. Yay, congrats. Self counter one. <laughs> um, the colored cells represent numbers between 1 and 26, which can be translated to corresponding letters from A to Z. Yes, well, this is what I noticed. I noticed the, the possibility of I double L here. And that made me think. And that is 23. And 23 is W. So this is W, I, L, L, Will. Oh, I thought that was going to be a Y. Oh, maybe I'm wrong about this. W I L L 21 is U. Ah, oh, I see. So it's it's will. It's will. And then the letter U, which, of course, in text speak could be U Y O U. Will you. M. A. R. R. Will you marry me? <laughs> is this is this to Miss Roberts then from Joe Block? Oh, I meant to look at the email. Hang on, hang on. Let me go over here um, and do some clickage. Let me click here. James Durham set this puzzle and is planning to ask Emily Roberts this evening to marry him. Oh my goodness me, James. Oh my goodness me. Well, well, em, I don't know. Do, I can't do this for you. You have to do it. <laughs> you set the puzzle. Oh my goodness. So Emily is being proposed to tonight. I, well, we wait with bated breath. Um, to hear whether James's proposal is successful. I really hope it will be. That's just fantastic. That's a brilliant puzzle. That was not easy at all. I was, I got terrified because I, I could see I double L here and I thought, oh my goodness, is this proposal? And I was still floundering around trying to work out how to solve it logically. But I think, I think we did. <laughs> and frankly, I don't know what to say. James, that's a brilliant debut, an incredible puzzle. And I am keeping everything crossed for you. <laughs> let us know. Um, let us know. Send us a picture. If, if it's good news, you must let us know and you must send us a picture. Um, and I wish you the very best of luck. 
and Emily, I think you have to agree. This is this is an incredible, it's an incredible thing that James has set. Uh, well done to Mark as well, actually, um, for sorting this out. And oh, thank you very much for watching. And let me know how you got on with the puzzle. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And let's see some love today for James and Emily. And let's let's hope things go well. I, I don't know. I better not say any more. Uh, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>